Did you realize that your children want to know about the supernatural realms of God? They're so hungry to know why they're here. At Kingdom Life Kids, we want you to have tools to take your children in to the secret place of the Most High God. Psalms 91 is a true realm, but you've got to ascend. You've got to teach your family how to go up using the scriptures, go up into the presence of the Lord, going into his realm and introducing your children into the kingdom of God realm. So this is a tool that you can use. And we're going to talk specifically about all the fun things inside of this book, the charts, the tests that you can use today. So stay tuned in. I want you to pay attention to one thing. That is that the sevens of God, the rainbow is one of the sevens. And this rainbow is showing how to bless the prophet, servant, teacher, exhorter, giver, ruler, mercy, all those portions of your child's heart. I want you to also know that there's a lot of questions you may have about using the kingdom conversations that are answered at this website. If you go to KLU online and click on electives, you'll find a lot of teaching there. Or you can go to ananasrainbow.net and find more teaching to answer questions. But we are inviting you to get this resource for free and the storybooks that go with it to bless your home and help your home be centered in on the peace of God. So Shalom will cover your home. I want to ask you to consider something this morning. We don't always live in the land of what if, but I'm going to ask you to do a what if with me. What if your family, this picture of your family, what if you guys gathered and imagine a time when you were a child what if, when you were a child, your family gathered on the couch, mama stroking you, maybe you were just three or four, but what if your mom and dad were right there, both of them, your brothers and sisters around, laying around on the floor, laying on mom and dad? What if they knew how to invite the presence of the Lord in your home so that you guys got still and quiet together? And what would happen in your family if mom and dad knew how to just, they were interceding and they just quietly held their children, maybe play a quiet song? And just let, let God speak. Let God be God. What would happen in your home if the children were getting words from the Lord? Because God loves to speak to his sheep and he's not, he's not playing favorites. He'll speak to the three-year-olds and the five-year-olds and the eight-year-olds. He will reveal himself wherever he's invited. But what if mom and dad knew how to do that, even for 15 minutes? And then what if they said, hey, Johnny, hey, Donnie, hey, Beth, what are you sensing from God? What is the Lord speaking in your heart right now? What changes would that have made in your home where you just had mm, perhaps a half an hour where Jesus was just honored, the family just slowed down, and they did quiet together. Mm. Do you know that's a lost art right now? But it's one of the cornerstones of having a healthy family, is quiet together. It's an indicator of how healthy emotionally your family's gonna be. How will our children actually think that God is good? Now, most of us are pretty good at convincing our kids that chocolate cake is good. I don't know if you, can you see this chocolate cake? It is a 
a beautiful chocolate cake. Yes. Good. And it's I've got a keto one for anybody that needs Thank to. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But this one is not keto. Most of us don't have to convince our kids to come and try a goodie. Amen. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's because somewhere in the uprising, they felt and tasted that that was good. But do they know that God is good and that his kingdom coming is good? Or do they associate God with stoicism hmm. and strict rules? And you better not move. You got to appear. You got to put the smile on your face. What are we doing? How are we going to welcome we can't just say the kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth. We've got to really know the king. Amen. <laughs> That's the kicker. Yes. Is how can we say, king, come in my home if he's not really honored there? Mm. So God began to, to teach me a while back about trauma in families and about how many families are actually being destroyed because of entertainment, because they're not abiding in the Word of God. And Jesus is really clear about stuff. Like, you know, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yes. The, the kingdom of God, Jesus said when he was here, he said, the kingdom is here right now. Yes. Right here. The kingdom is here. What was he talking about? It was Jesus. Jesus at the very center of the life. You know, that, that whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is just Jesus Christ, or many call his name Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And we honor him as the son of the living God. He's part of the Trinity, and he wants the love that's in the Trinity to fill every home, that every child would be so secure, feeling that they're right in the middle of love. Mm -hmm. And right, that's what moms and dads are for. Daddy representing Father God, Mother representing Holy Spirit. And the child feeling so secure that they're being taught how to have communication and companionship through and to with Jesus Christ. That he's a very present friend, just like the Word of God says. Wow, what would that be like? for families to believe that Jesus Christ is very present help. Would they be anxious? Would they be overworked? Would they be perpetually in motion? Like the, you know, the book of Daniel says in the last days people are going to run to and fro looking. No. They would be shalom and balance and peace in your home. And out of that shalom and affection and touch and listening skills that are really good attuning, mm. which means I look at you and I carefully watch. Attuning is sort of like, you know how it says we weep with those who weep, we rejoice with those who rejoice? That's attuning. So I don't come in like Tigger and go, ah, 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 you know, and, and, and lick all over somebody. If I, if I, I want to watch, I want to judge their ability to receive that love. And I'm, you know, when somebody's a little bit sad or a little bit suspicious of you or not trusting, you just have to hold back and attune and watch and see. And boy, in our broken world, Jesus gave us the way to attune, he said, Jesus, and through the Holy Spirit, will be able to judge and, and tell, is it a broken flax? Are they a smoking flax? Or are they just barely holding it together? So we're going to learn how to attune. Now, in that, those are all just healthy emotional concepts. Attuning, 
listening well, great listening skills. But how many parents need help with that? So um, after going to a number of, of seminars, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of great stuff out there, but it's expensive. Uh, the Thrive material with Dr. Carl Lehman and, and Dr. Um, Jim Wilder, great people. A lot of, I mean, precious people. Uh, I've been to a lot of seminars, and I just felt that the Lord wanted me to sink it all down into one. Mm. So I just tried to shut up the corn cob. <laughs> now, I'm an Alabama girl. Hello. Running through the cornfields, you know. And <clears throat> I, I, I won't be able to take this book to all the families that need it. So that's why I'm going to tell you this morning how you can use this book practically to help your family, okay? I'm going to put, do I need to use this mic? Do I need Trevor to hold yeah, it? Yeah, we need it. Okay, we need where's it. my Trevor? Trevor, can you hold this just for a minute? I just you want to. Do you want the mic stand? Or you need the mic stand? Um, well, maybe he can bring me the mic stand and I'll, I'll try. Because I need, I want to flip through the pages and I just want to show you. Okay, you there's, the there's some exercises in here and we're just going to get real practical for a minute. Yeah. Because one of the exercises is called Quiet Together. Bring it back, right? Can we do this? Okay, I'm going to learn how to do this. Okay, one of the, this is the book, what it looks like, okay, but I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this because it's a little bit uh, easier. Do you see, if, if you can see, this is page 52. This book has got a lot of, it's got theology in it and a lot of Bible verses, but a, a child doesn't care about your theology. What they want to know is, do you love me? Do you like me? Am I likable? And so all of these skills, these emotional EQ skills, are the foundation for the kingdom of God coming in your home. So this little exercise is called, Do We Share Quiet Together? Now as you read it, it's just describing the way that you can gather in the living room or on the couch den, just quietly, everybody laying around together in your PJs or whatever, but be real, be quiet together, put on your favorite kind of soft worship music, whatever the kids like, but, but mostly can they get into that quiet place where their brains can connect, because we cannot connect with God just only through, <laughs> You know, bouncy, bouncy, lights flashing. You know, I know that there's, there's a, maybe there's a good intention and they're trying to relate to a lot of people. Many churches have, oh, sorry. Many churches have, um, you know, the flashing lights and the uh, smoke and all this crazy stuff going on. But it's in the quiet place. How many of you know, why did God say, be, I don't need it right now, honey. Um, why would he say be still? and know that I'm God. That's because he knows brain science. <laughs> Who created the brain? How's that brain going to get into shalom and, and receive truth from the king himself? That is where they have their own personal relationship with God and it starts when they're very young. Two and three. And they will never forget it. If you're a smart papa or, or a nana or whatever, you're going to soothe that electrical circuitry so that the truth can go in. And the, the Bible says it's little by little, line upon line, precept on precept. So even though we wish that we could just open the lid and pour the whole thing in, so we just don't have to stay, oh, watchful and alert and in tune with the Holy Spirit all the time. Sometimes, have you ever felt like that? Like, gosh, can I get a break? Can I just walk in the flesh sometimes? Can I just do whatever I want to? You know? <laughs> well, the great news <laughs> is that Jesus will help us. Yes. Jesus is with us, but he did say, I mean, did you hear that phrase? I die daily. And so we're, we do get to, if we want the kingdom of God to come in our families, 
and the reigning presence of Jesus Christ, then we get to do that dying to ourself every day. Jesus said, you cannot serve both God and mammon. You can't have it both ways. You can't have Disney flowing through your home and the Holy Spirit at the same time. They are two opposite forces. And as it's, it's become very aware lately, you know, like Disney's just all about witchcraft. We, I kind of always knew that. You know, it, there was that vibe of do your own thing. It's a small world, whatever. Uh, it, yes. It's not, it's a little bit of truth mixed with a lie. Now I made uh, those keto brownies and I'm telling you they are all good. Avocados and gluten-free flour, they're, they're good all the way. But if I went out in the pasture and got some cow poop and mixed it in there, because you wouldn't be able to tell necessarily if I ground up the cow poop that there was uh, cow poop in the brownies, right? It would appear Especially if I sprinkled it with chocolate chips. Yeah. Okay, so now, is it going to be good for you if I serve brownies with cow poop in it? That's exactly what entertainment is doing. Yeah. And the word entre, inter, entertainment is meaning coming in between. Hmm. Oh, what are they trying to come in between you and your creator? Mm -hmm. Entertainment is not how God designed us. Just keep me fascinated, keep me, you know, keep me entertained. No, help me to learn how to serve. How, help me learn how to, to engage and have a conversation. Help me learn how to work with joy. Hmm. Teach me how to grow things and how to get in there with my hands and get dirty. Kids don't need to be entertained. They gotta have a very present mama and daddy teaching them all these skills. And quieting is one of them. So I've got, I picked out my favorite skills, EQ skills. Um, I wanna just, I, I would love to go through each one, but when you get the book, and it's a free flip book on KLU, KLU online, right? Going through it, it's showing right now, it's off of our uh, okay. website. You can flip through this thing, there's a paper shortage, so just please download it and Put it on your own paper. Or you can, you can buy it from us, but, but I'd rather you have it for free. Um, for instance, one of the keys of freedom in your family is knowing Hebrew, believe it or not. Hebrew is the language of freedom. And sadly, our, our educational institutions like Harvard back in the 1600s and then you know different universities that were founded, Yale, on teaching pastors Hebrew, because they knew Hebrew was the, the key language, um, they decided they would just let go of that. <coughs> Letting go of Hebrew was always a mistake. Hebrew, for head, is the word water source. Think of a water spout. Where does the water come up out of? Where does a river start? You know, the headwaters. We used to go boating on the headwaters of the Tennessee River, mm -hmm. right where the waters come up. Headwater is it's it's conveying springing up with life, mm -hmm. flowing, flowing, blessing. You know we're made of water. We need lots of water. Thank God for water and hydration. But that's what God said. As the Christ is the head the source of water for every man, so is the, the husband going to be the source of living water and blessing and provision and protection for, every, the, for the woman. And what would it be like if, if every daddy knew that? Oh, it's pretty sobering. I'm, I'm supposed to be the source? Well, I better get plugged into the source. I better go to the head Christ, my source of living water and get soaked into him so that I'm able to splash all over my kids. And they don't find me as the bossy, controlling one. They find me as the source of wisdom and blessing and love and tenderness, a gentle shepherd, just like Jesus. Would your home be different if moms and dads were related to each other that way? Mom tenderly devoted to dad? Mom and dad 
mutually honoring each other, it's mutual. Singing songs together, worshiping in the home where Jesus Christ is the center. Now, if that doesn't appeal to you, you are not going to like heaven. And I would, I would encourage you just to go all out in the run in the opposite direction, see where it gets you. But if you really want to go after peace and wisdom in your home, you're going to need to run towards Jesus. Because in these days, God's done a great favor for us. He's allowed the whole earth to be shaken. He's allowed everything that we thought we knew about church and all that to be out the door. <laughs> And now we can come back and begin to ask ourselves, hmm, what was the original intention of God for my life and my family? Made in the image of God, what does that mean? Did I mess it up? I mean, I got this little thing here, okay. I just wanna, wanna show you something. You're gonna have to reckon with a few of these things. You're going to have to reckon with the fact that Jesus was a Hebrew. And he spoke Hebrew. He was not British or English. <laughs> he spoke language like lampstand, and, which is we consider it a menorah. So as you're thinking about using this rain, or not rainbow, kingdom conversation book, I've already taught on, on Jesus as the menorah, Jesus as the lampstand of the world, and that that's your identity in Jesus. You have seven portions of your spirit because Jesus had seven portions. Seven spirits of God, right here. I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus has made it really clear, it is not by might, nor by power, nor by intellect, nor by your money, but it's by my spirit. He said, whoever you are, come freely drink of me, eat of me. You don't need money. You don't buy wine and oil without price. Isaiah 55. Come on, you need that healing balm. Ask for, you know, in Revelation 3. Ask me. Um, in, or Jeremiah 33 also, ask me and I will surely give. Just ask me. So, um, Jesus has got the way because he is the way. Or Yeshua is the way. He's the lampstand of the whole world and he holds your lampstand. In Psalms, King David said, your, your Lord, you hold my scroll. You, you hold my book. Now that's another Hebrew thing. If you say, ah, oh, scroll, that sounds so old fashioned. Well, it's Hebrew, but he holds the scroll. So it helps us understand in Revelation when, when we see that Jesus is the only one worthy to open your scroll. Who's found worthy to open the scroll? He's the only one worthy to tell you who you are. Yes. And if we just sit with him and say, Jesus, open my scroll. What's, what's the song of my scroll? What are, the, what are the aspects? What have you written in my scroll or in my book about me? I just want to sit with you. I want to know what you say, Lord. Do we know that he's excited to come tell us? <laughs> he's so happy that we want to know. He's delighted to give you the kingdom. My little, my little ones, he said, I'm so delighted to give you the kingdom. I want your home to be the most peaceful, wonderful place. Everybody attracted to come in there because they'll walk in and go, something really beautiful here. Well, you've got to cultivate that. It will not happen by accident. I mean, and that is, that is where we're talking about, and you can explore this. Your prophet, servant, teacher, exhorter, giver, ruler, mercy, all those parts of you have to rise up. And there's no more excuses for saying, I, I don't do that. 
you know, for say, say mamas and daddies take in, how do you take back the atmosphere in your home? You got to put your foot down. You got to have a, a banner in your house and you got to go through waving your, your banner and saying, Lord Jesus, every room in this house is dedicated to you. All, all the furnishings, the windows anointed with oil. You got to kind of do the God thing. It's not going to happen unless you take dominion of the airwaves. You got to say, oh, there's nothing but Jesus coming in this house. The atmosphere of heaven. I want the sounds, the frequencies, the vibrations, the messages, the truth of the kingdom. So uh, the newspapers and all the regular old news stations, do they bring the vibration and the good news into your house? Is that how you, you use the web, is just to bring in worship and good news all the time? I mean, you've got to be so careful, he said, guard your heart. For out of it are the issues of life. Guard your home. Watch over the atmosphere. So just practically, you're going to be able to watch over the atmosphere of your home as you get in on page 11. No, sorry, I'm reading it wrong. 41. Um, there's, there's all kind of messages in here about healing broken hearts and restoring the peace of God to your heart. So there's no anxious thought allowed. Every thought is taken captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Um, this, this whole little book here, uh, starting, for instance, with the questions about heartfelt unity in your home. Did you, you realize that kids are really smart? People are smart. When they come in your home, they're going to know if there's unity between mom and dad. They can tell. And so mom and dad, if you're not working on your unity every day, like stopping to pray together, just really worshiping together, the kids will be able to sense if there's discord or unity. What does Psalms 133 say? Where the blessing flows out. Where does, where does God pour out over the head? Where there's unity. It runs down. The oil on Aaron's beard runs down. So if mama and daddy are not in unity, you can't pretend about that. You might go on fancy vacations. You might sit and laugh at a movie. You might even show up at church. But if you are not in absolute honoring, mutually honoring, and doing this Holy Spirit thing of unity in the Spirit, you can't pretend with God. And the devil sees it, and your kids see it, and if they see that mom and dad don't work, what is their belief? Mm. God don't work. Because Mom and Dad are a picture of Abba Father and Holy Spirit coming together. So you want to raise some kids that will not believe in God and will harden their heart against the, the Lord and Holy Spirit and will uh, dishonor their parents? Would you like to have a little bit of all that uh, mud and poop rubbed in your face? Well, just keep pretending and go on another expensive vacation or, or just keep going to the park and playing frisbee and acting like you don't need to work at this whole thing of Holy Spirit filling our home. It's absolute priority. Now, if you want to commit to Jesus Christ and His kingdom, His beautiful, loving, sweet presence filling your home, then He's the honored guest. He is the number one consideration. And when people come to your home and they're, uh, you know, they're walking in there, uh, I, there's not too many women that I know that would tolerate somebody walking in and with their muddy shoes and, and sloshing mud all over the kitchen counters and, and muddying up the floors. But do we do that? Do we tolerate Jezebel, so to speak, an ugly, controlling spirit? Do we tolerate that in our homes? Do we tolerate uh, all of those ugly spirits? Anything from self-pity to, to 
you know, whatever you could name. I hear somebody's phone going off. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you, as I'm talking about kingdom conversations, to know that there's a price. You're going to pay a price for intimacy. You're going to pay a price for this kind of unity that we're talking about. It is going to be so valuable. It is going to be so worth it because the joy of your children and hearing them say, Hey, Mom, I had a dream last night. I got consumed again. I was taken up with the angels. I saw the shepherd king. Oh, Mom, he was just sharing his glory with me. I don't know why he would share his glory with me. But it's amazing. And I saw these big angels. And, and, and it's so cool when your child comes and tells you all about heaven. And they're having encounters with Jesus or they're writing music. And you see your kids at age 10, 11, 12 saying, oh, Wait, Mom. I, I feel God right here. I think, we're, I think we're supposed to go pray for that man. He's really sad. So this is a lifestyle. This is something that is, I mean, I believe that this whole 2022 thing, 2021, all the 2020s, is so we can see clearly the king and the kingdom. How many of you love that movie, uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? And you fall in love with Aslan. Go back and watch it again. It's so cool when the stone table breaks and you see all through that movie how they treat each other, bowing. They're bowing before each other. There's so much honor for the king's creation, for the sons and daughters of Zion or the sons and daughters of the king. If you could capture just an ounce of that honor and pour it over your, the heads of your kids, it, it's going to change homes. So when we talk about Kingdom Kids and Kingdom Life University, we're not being trite or trivial or... Uh, we're, not, we're not asking you to do something small. This is a massive shift in the way you do life, in the way you rule and reign over your home, and you say, this is what I will have. You got to take your little scepter, like Esther took her, you know, her scepter and appeared before the king, and you got to say, this is what I want. This is what I want, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop that right now. This is what I want. This is what I will have. I will have peace in my home because the Lord Jesus said I could rule and reign with him. So the Lord wants to ordain strength and dignity in your own heart first. Um, this, is, this is where the battles are and beginning is right here in our own heart. So that's why I've got all these exercises in here. What does love look like? Now, I want to just briefly, I can't talk about all of them in detail. I'm just going to trust that you're going to use it. And if you want to dialogue with me at, at, at the nanasrainbow.net and ask questions or, um, you know, that kind of thing. But this, this whole exercise about am I safe? That is actually neurotheology. It's the prefrontal cortex. It's the core of it. First question every child is asking is, it's every person is asking, is am I safe? Are you safe? Can I trust you? Are you gonna hurt me? We gotta be aware of that. And we wanna be so trustworthy. Right? We want to be so aware of that that we can't just walk into somebody's life and demand trust. Amen. You know, that's not right. We have to earn trust. So just on, on these two pages alone, there's a, a lot of treasure because what you're doing is you do these exercises. You're helping your children see their own need to trust Jesus as the chief guardian. 
we naturally have self-protection. Self-protection rises up as soon as you meet somebody new. And, and in the exercise, it's, it's asking you to see yourself as a beautiful uh, estate or a castle or land, like it talks about in Ezekiel 36. You are the land or the garden of God. And you are worthy of His cultivating. He wants to come to your land and, and make it beautiful. He wants to maybe put in some new trees. He wants to dig up some stuff, put in some new sidewalks. He wants to... Your land will be surrounded by the gates of praise and the walls of salvation. Read Ezekiel 36. In the land that was desolate, he wants to come and do this beautiful work there. It's, it's actually the work that he did in Genesis 1. You can pray this over your family or anyone. When you, there was in here, one of the sevens of God is praying the days of creation over your loved ones. What, what happened on the first day of creation? Well, it was all muck. And then the Lord separated the truth from lies. So when we start praying for somebody, we can just pray, Lord, just lay your hands on them. You don't even have to touch them, but lay your hands on them and separate truth from lies. Let them be able to see and discern what is secure walking ground? Like you can walk on, on land, but you can't walk on mush. So you've got to have the Lord to divide between the land and the water. That's the first day of creation. That's what prophets do with their, their, um, their words and their teaching is divide between truth and lies. That's an important part of your being. And I've already taught on that. I don't want to belabor it. You can find it on KLU.com or whatever, the Kingdom Life University online. You can find that there. When I I'm, I'm just want to get to the idea that you are a beautiful land and there's a gate at the entrance of your heart and your little one, that, that little part of you, stands like this. Everybody does this. They stand holding on to the gate in our natural man, in our immaturity, we stand holding on, looking up and down the street, like, who's coming off, off? Who's coming towards me? So we want to begin to shift our thoughts and, and imagine, you've got to use your imagination now. Imagine Jesus coming down your street. Imagine that Jesus comes to your gate. He's got a big smile. He would really like for you to let him come in, if you will. Some of the girls, I've worked with a lot of girls who've been trafficked and broken. When they do this exercise, they'll say, I don't have any gate. It's all broken down. People come back and forth on my land. They're just traipsing in and out. That saying, I don't have any boundaries. I don't have any protection. And I've been so stripped of my protection for all these years, I don't have any way to protect myself. But Jesus can come and put up a new gate for them. And Jesus can stand right next to them as their chief guardian. He could do that, that job of protecting with them. We can let Jesus be the chief guardian and they could be the junior guardian if they want to. But they're soon going to find out that he's got the best, all the power, and he can do a really great job. So they can rest. They can take a break. If they want to go play in the backyard, go play. Have a good time. Jesus, Jesus will hold down the fort at the front gate of your heart. And we can begin to rest and go, really? He really will? Be my chief guardian? Wow, how would that shift things if we really believed that He 
was the chief guardian. And you know, you know how Jehovah's sneaky. He's going to come in. He wants to be the chief financial officer, the chief, the chief uh, director at your farm. He wants to be the social director. He wants to go upstairs and, and bring every emotion downstairs. Uh, Jesus wants to actually change the landscape. And if he wants to put a fountain right in the middle of your backyard, we got to say, yes, Lord, whatever. We, but that's, that's our place as the sons and daughters of glory, is to trust him and just keep saying, yes, yes, I don't understand. This feels so weird. Gosh, what's happening? I don't know. And then you hear the Lord saying from Matthew 6 and 7, he says, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about anything at all. I want you to live one day at a time. So that's another kingdom concept that we got to get used to. Oh, one day at a time. We can't plan it all out. Oh, is that really kingdom? And get used to that flow. Because the kingdom of God is a flow. It's a river. Ezekiel 47 river coming right in your house and flowing through every room, through the hallways. And are we okay with the Holy Spirit river flowing through our homes? I mean, when that happens, you never know what's going to happen. In my home, it might mean that I've got, uh, I had 55 young people show up at 2 in the morning. And, um, you know, their bus broke down. They needed a place to stay. So we got out all the beds and I had kids everywhere. And, you know, the next morning you're flipping eggs and you're going, well, this is fun. I love it. And they happen to be a singing group. It's Eddie James and his group. And, you know, if you know Eddie James, they sing. They'll sing for their breakfast. And so you just have to get used to this whole kingdom of thing is every tribe, every tongue, every nation. No room for me in my little ways. No room for me in my own understanding. No more room for me to stand over at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and, and judge and figure everything out. That is old school. We are saying, reposition us at the tree of life, Jesus. How you always intended us to be looking at Jesus centered on Jesus Christ, centered on Yeshua, HaMashiach, the Prince of Peace. So that's the invitation of Kingdom Conversations, of Kingdom Life Kids. And uh, I, I, I just want to let you know there's a whole bunch of exercises in here that are really fun and they will challenge you to think about your definitions of shame and your definitions of fun and your definitions of love bonding versus fear bonding and, and what is your group identity? All these are really important questions that your kids are gonna feel a whole lot more secure if mom and dad know what is the family group identity. And you speak it out. Because we all need to be in a family, right? There's all kind of great exercises in here. So I can, this is what forgiveness is not. This is how to love your enemies. My personal favorite I just love going through the sevens of God and seeing back here in the back. I love, now this is cultivating emotional language uh, from God's library. I love this one about the, um, there's all, you know, the sevens of God are just amazing. So when you get back here and you start studying the sevens, and this is uh, called Yeshua at the very center, take your rightful place at the center of my prophet portion, uh, my servant portion, but I think I've got back, oh yeah, here we go. This is getting into the divine patterns. I love the tapestry, the majesty of God and his patterns. But my favorite, one of them is the seven sacred soothing words of Jesus from the cross. That is remarkable. And all I can say is Jesus has been my teacher. I mean, he's, if this is good and right and true and you test it and try it, you can do that. You can use, look through the flip book and put it on your iPad so you can see it easily. Test it and try it. See if you like it. And it may just bless your life. 
Because you're getting identity of Jesus for me, emotional, the, the foundation of your home is that affection and emotional connection. You've got lots of tools there to build that foundation in the kindness and forgiveness, grace of God. So then you've got identity and destiny. You can, you can really build a solid home on this. You can build something that's going to last. And I think you're going to be so happy because it's just going to take you up, 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 up through the vortex into the glory realm. Which I think you know it's there, right? You know that there's another realm that where you can, can live, you can go into the heavenly place. If you don't know, man, you're missing out. <laughs> if all you do is go to church and check a box and read a Bible verse every occasionally, uh, that's just the taste and see cracker. I hope it's a good experience, but it might not be. Sometimes people get a really rotten cracker when they go to church. You know, it's, it's just stale and old, and it's not bringing any life. Jesus Christ, His Spirit is life. Life to all your flesh, renewing you, teaching you, kissing you. It's like Jerry talked about this morning, yet worshiping Jesus, just being in His presence. It's addictive. <laughs> All you want to do is just be with Him. So I want to encourage you to, to take a look at this um, whole idea of kingdom coming on the earth, kingdom coming in your home. And we do have, I just want you to see, Additionally, we've got storybooks for children in different ethnicities. And the storybooks are to help validate the truth in small bites for children of this other larger kingdom conversations book. So if you really want the kingdom to come, you can get the, the parent teacher guide, or this, is, this can be broken down into curriculum for your child. There's all these Bible stories and activities. Um, I've got them in some different ethnicities. We have them um, also that called Jesus, as he was called in Hebrew, Yeshua. So I have some of the, the story books in the parent guide with the honoring of Yeshua as the name. Or in some people, you know, I was raised in the Southern Baptist Church and we called him Jesus. So we do have a lot of people that still know him as Jesus. So th this is free for you at Kingdom Life University. It can help uh, busy moms with stories. The idea here is that mama is enjoying her child. How many moms really enjoy their children? Do they have time to enjoy the gift of God and just sit and hold them and treasure them and cherish them? If your mama did not treat you like this, if this was not your mom, then you can get some healing from God. Because we go back and ask Him to reparent us, right? Oh, He's good at that. And He'll go back. You can just say, Holy Spirit, because that's, you know, moms are supposed to represent Holy Spirit. You say, Jesus, what is the Holy Spirit really like? I want you to show me. And then get quiet, get your pen and paper out, and start paying attention. What is he showing you? I'll just give you an illustration. One time we were doing this exercise, and this is when I first did it. I, I, I like to see myself. I always start with, it when we're doing these exercises, you start from a place where you're just with, with either Father God Jesus or Holy Spirit, whichever one you feel most connected to. And I always felt really connected to Jesus and safe with Him. So I would imagine myself just kind of sitting with Jesus. And sometimes He would be like my big brother. And I would just sit in His lap almost. And I just lean over on Him. And so I felt safe there. I could start there. And so when I ask Him that question of what is Holy Spirit like? I knew he would tell me good stuff. I didn't know what he was going to say. 
But Jesus, in my, and I'm looking through my imagination, the eyes of the Spirit, he pointed at a cloud. And uh, I thought, okay, what do I do with that? So I asked the, my coach, he's pointing at a cloud. And she said, well, ask him why. So I asked Jesus, why are you pointing at the cloud? He said, because that's what my spirit is like. And I thought, hmm, I remember that makes sense. He was the cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night. Okay, that sounds scripturally sound. And, um, you know, us Baptists, we have to send it through the Word. I mean, I don't, I mean, we should. It should go through the Word. So I, I saw the cloud, though, start to turn really blue and, and vibrate like blue bubble wrap and little pockets of water were there and and I'm watching this and I see Jesus wink at the cloud like he's got a relationship with Holy Spirit and all of a sudden this blue vibrating water bubble thing comes over me and Jesus and he's like moving and dancing and he's popping his water all over us okay so Jesus is laughing I'm getting, spla I'm getting splashed with water. Now, only God would know how much I love water. I really enjoy water. I love it, water skiing, water, water, water. I love swimming. Water is so fun. Water is my friend. So Jesus knew that. And he wanted me to know that Holy Spirit is water, like watering me. And so um, I'm looking at Jesus and he's having so much fun as, as I'm getting splashed and we're all in the water and this whole, whole watery thing's happening. And he said, you never have to worry about being dehydrated again. Now that, how did he know that I had a, a fear of dehydration? How did he know I got dehydrated as a kid and, and, and really suffered? How did he know that I had this fetish about water bottles, that I always have to have a water bottle in my hand? Jesus knows everything. So it was like, how cool is that? And then this blue cloud starts, like he came up and took the form of a man and he started like moving around me and Jesus. Like he was celebrating with us. He starts like dancing and doing these cool moves. And he said, and he winked at me and he said, and I'm gonna teach you how to dance. The Holy Spirit knows how to dance? Are you kidding? Yeah. He will teach me? Yeah. Whoa! How did he know that that would be the desire of my heart? That I would love to learn how to dance. I, we couldn't afford dance lessons when I was a kid. Holy Spirit's going to teach me how to dance? Whoa! I want to know Holy Spirit more. So just in that, in that little five minute exercise, I learned the Holy Spirit's fun. Holy Spirit is water. He's, he's a cloud covering me, protecting from the heat of the day. Holy Spirit, I never have to be afraid of being dehydrated. Look, I learned so much about Holy Spirit that I didn't know. That's what God wants to do as we are willing to surrender our imagination to Jesus. Now, I can't give my imagination over to the world's systems and the world's entertainment and the world's movies. I can't partake of the world and Jesus. You have to consecrate everything. Your mind, emotions, your imagination. You have to pull away. Like the Bible says, come out from among them. Be separate. Um, he's not being a drag. God's not being a, a you know, potty hoopa. When he says that, he's saying... I want to be everything to you. I want to, I want to infuse you with my love. But just like a good husband says to his wife, I want to be your husband. But you can't get in bed with other men. <laughs> Sorry, honey. There's only one. There's only just me. But I do want you to come to bed with me. I want you to be intimate with me. I want you to let me surround you with my love. I want my word to be your daily bread all day long. I want us to be in relationship. I want us to look at each other and just love each other. Every time you turn around, I'm, if I catch your eye, 
I'm going to be conveying love to you. He wants to captivate us. And he's really serious about this love affair. Right? So are we willing to sign up? When you say, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done, you're saying, I want one Lord, one love, one faith, one bow. I just want one thing. Here's a picture of what it kind of looks like. Ooh, can you see it? Here's the continuum of mental health. How do you be mentally healthy? Jesus Christ, right in the middle of the whole thing because he's balancing you. He's keeping you balanced. So this is the, the picture of one Lord, one faith, one baptism, Yeshua in the middle. That's the theme of the kingdom. And kingdom conversations are all about cultivating this. Jesus Christ at the center. Jesus didn't come and die on the cross and go through all that hell and to leave us flopping in the wind, right? He came to give us stability, one heart, one mind, secure attachments, steady. He's so good. He's better than chocolate cake. He's so good. He's, he's, He's more colorful than all these treats. Can you see how colorful they are? He's got all the color and the sounds. He's got the dance. He's got the celebrations. He's got the way of life that we really long for. He's got the connections and the family vibe. I mean, if you get into this kingdom stuff, you're going to find family. And you can't, gosh, it's just amazing. I have my brothers from India and Africa and Philippines and all over the world. I've got my family. As Jesus said, who's my family? Those who do the will of God. So I've got family and we just immediately, wait, I see that light in your eyes. (laughs) Give me a hug. You know, we're family because of the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. The, there's, there's no compromising here. The Word of God is powerful. It is, it is the, the sword in our hand. It is the way of healing. It is the way of life. We've, we've got to cultivate all of these things, but our children will never want to put a, you know, the Word of God in their heart and use the sword unless we first have relationship with them and affection and we have these skills of, of connecting and you know gosh if your if your mom and dad didn't have it they didn't have it but you know what you can have it if you want you can be very astute and cultivate emotional maturity spiritual maturity and there is no spiritual maturity without a healthy emotional heart so I'm just praying that you'll check it out, see what you discern. But those exercises and everything that we're teaching are God's way. And it's going to lead you right back to Jesus at the center.